are clinicians with patients who maintain a low level of viremia over time, right. who have been cruising for years between 50 and 1,000 right. copies. In those patients that, that have been somehow stuck there, right. what would you advise their clinicians to do at, at, at this point? Yeah, I think that's one of the most difficult questions that I get, and I get it all the time. You know, what do you do with someone that has low-level viremia? Um, and I kind of divide it a little bit. I mean, if someone really has low-level viremia between like 50 and 200, where some of the time they're suppressed and some of the time their viral load is 80 or 137 or whatever, I'm a little bit less worried about that patient um, because I think that at that level of replication, the pace of selection of new mutations is probably very, very low. Um, on the other hand, if you have people that have consistently replicating virus, you know, 500, 600, 1,000, um, but they're clinically stable, I worry that you're going to select for additional resistance mutations that are going to compromise your future regimens. But the, the yin to that yang is that my patient's tolerating, that re tolerating the regimen, their CD4 is 600. Um, I just don't feel comfortable changing their regimen. And, and I, th I think that's a very difficult spot. And I think that um, for the most part, you know, it's pretty easy if the CD4 cell count is not very good or falling. Then I think it's easy. You know, you, you, you're going to create a new regimen. I think what's dangerous is, you know, kind of adding one drug at a time, you know, trying to kind of guess, you know, and, and I haven't had much luck with that, and I think it's, it can be dangerous. Um, I think in general, if you can get a resistance test, um, if the viral load's above 500, you probably can. You should get that information.